Hi everyone, we are back with another episode here for all of you. Um, today we're talking about a really special topic. It's actually one of my favorite topics. Um, I'm a little bit of a nerd like that, <laughs> and you'll understand why when we talk about this a little bit more. But um, this topic I just find to be super, super cool. We're talking about epigenetics and how epigenetics play a role in um, in egg donation and using an egg donor as intended parents. And it, I just think it's super, super fascinating mm -hmm. and uh, really interesting. And for that, we have brought Dion back to join us to answer some of mm -hmm. these questions and have a really fun conversation. Yeah. So thanks for being here, Dion. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure because like you said, this is an exciting topic and we do have the intended mothers as they're choosing their egg donor. They do often keep in mind wanting their egg donor to look a little similar to them because one of their main questions is, will the baby look like me? Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really important question, right? Because yeah. that's what we all, we all want children that look like us. So yeah. um, before we <laughs> jump into that question specifically, yeah. um, can you give our viewers mm -hmm. a very brief and simple explanation for what epigenetics is? Yes, of course. It will be brief and simple because that's how I understand it. So, yeah, so epigenetics are the study of how genes are being expressed. Yeah. So while, you know, when we go back talking about will the baby look like me, um, you know, the genes are directly coming from the egg donor and the father, mm -hmm. a.k.a. The, the sperm donor. But then epigenetics, you know, has, is shedding light on how, on how these genes can be influenced while the intended mother is carrying the baby. So even if she doesn't have that direct genetic connection, she still has a much greater influence than previously thought. Yeah, and I think I wanna expand on that for everybody watching so that you understand that epigenetics are not just something that plays a role when we are talking about egg donors or using an egg donor, mm -hmm. okay? Epigenetics play a role in all aspects of everybody's life, regardless of egg donation or not. If mm -hmm. the parents created a child with both of their genetic makeup, we would still have epigenetics that play a role in determining the expression of the genes present at multiple parts throughout somebody's life. It's not just it during gestation, mm -hmm. but it's also as we age, right? Our epigenetics now play a role in our health and the way we live plays a role in how those genes are expressed. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, well, so I think that's important for everybody who's watching. So it's not just like this is only specific to egg right. donors, but mm -hmm. this is what's cool about using an egg donor is that uh, as intended parents, we still have an influence mm -hmm. over the development and creation of that child. Yes. Right. Yes. So back to your original question, which right. everyone likes to ask is, well, and I'm going to ask it of you. Yeah. Will the baby look like me if I used an egg donor or right. like my wife, if she used an egg donor, yeah. I should be yeah. clear. Yeah, exactly. You might not be the best person to be asking yeah. that question. Mark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but absolutely. You know, as we said, that's a valid question since the DNA is coming directly from the egg donor and the father. But, you know, the answer to that is, you know, the intended mother is going to have much more of an effect than previously thought on the development of that baby while she's carrying the baby and, and beyond well, you know, yes. throughout life, as you, as you just yeah. talked about. So the short answer to that is, you know, she will have an influence on it for yeah. sure. So we can't 100% say yes. that, yeah. <laughs> that that baby will look like the yeah. uh, intended parents. Even if you're uh, genetically connected. It, Our babies yeah. don't frequent, babies don't always look like, look right. like you, exactly. right? That's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My oldest son, you know, does not look like me, so it's, <laughs> it is okay. Yeah. But, um, but to that point, but to that point is that the mother during those months of gestation, right, of yeah. carrying that child is going to pass on yeah. some genetic makeup to the baby that will influence, maybe it will influence the expression of certain, um, certain characteristics, certain, um, you know, hair color or, mm -hmm. or skin tone or, you know, facial makeup that wouldn't have otherwise been expressed because they are taking on some of that uh, genetic makeup from the mother during gestation. Yes, the gestational period is such an important time. You know, the uterine environment, they've shown in studies that it's crucial influencing factors such as brain development, mm. metabolism, and immune health. That's awesome. Yeah. So 
you know, I, I had another question. So for everyone watching, I wrote down a bunch of questions that I thought were going to be really cool mm -hmm. around, uh, around this topic um, that I'm sure many of you, um, many of you have thought uh, or considered yourself. Um, do birth mothers using donor eggs influence the baby's development? So not necessarily their, you know, how they look, but their mm -hmm. development. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The short answer to that is yes. Okay. Um, while the DNA blueprint may be coming directly from the donor egg, right, mm -hmm. and the father's sperm, you know, as we've been talking about epigenetics, the study of how these genes are expressed is um, really emphasizing the role that the prenatal environment has in the development and future health of the baby. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah, super cool. So tell us about... I mean, I, I know, but I said so. So tell everybody who's yeah. watching uh, a little bit about the importance of the prenatal window yeah. and how that impacts epigenetics and, and how that then would impact, you know, the growing child. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, as we were discussing, this is a very critical period. You know, there's many critical periods in child development, right? Yeah. They're all important. But, you know, the time spent in the uterus, referred to as the prenatal window, is one of the most significant. Because during this period, the mother's body is communicating with the developing fetus and influencing gene expression in response to that environment. So, so it's not just about you know, the nutrients that are being provided. It's also about preparing the baby for the world yeah. they'll be entering. Super, super cool. So um, how can a when you're talking about how can a mother optimize her prenatal environment for not just a healthy pregnancy, but a healthy child? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great, great question. So, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we're, we're all aware of to some extent, you probably better than most people, but you know, one of them being, you know, having a healthy diet, right? A balanced, 100%, yeah. Yeah, balanced diet with essential nutrients like folic acid, omega threes, and just making sure that they're, you know, getting, getting, um, enough nutrition. So this piece that you just shared is so important. I have this conversation with patients all the time mm -hmm. because I want them to understand, to conceptualize that what we're doing now has really a huge generational impact. So I, I often say to them, and, and if you were my patient sitting yes. across uh -huh. me, I would uh -huh. say, okay, so Dion, your grandmother's health Mm -hmm. The way she lived, how well she lived, how well she took care of her health mm -hmm. didn't just impact your mother, but impact your epigenetics, the mm -hmm. way you live today and your health and so forth today, and also impacts your children's health. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I want all of us to think when we're thinking about epigenetics, because it, it allows us to take this much broader understanding about mm -hmm the decisions we make, the choices we make, the things we do on a regular basis. So you're talking about diet. Mm -hmm. You know, if we eat terribly all the time eating fried foods and, and so forth, mm -hmm. it's changing mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. epigenetics yeah. and it's impacting our gene expression at this moment. But mm -hmm. it's also going to do that over time if we it's not like one french fry right. but, I know, it's like but you know <laughs> but 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 eating that on a regular basis right not having yeah. good healthy mm -hmm. diet habits yeah. is not just going to do that now but it's going to do that for generations to come mm -hmm. so i think it's really important our our great grandparents had this truly beautiful understanding of their impact generationally and we've lost that over time and mm -hmm. i think that really impacts us today mm -hmm. and so the choices we make with diet and, and other things definitely impacts um, the way our body feels and, and ha what we're going to pass on to these children when they are inside of us gestationally. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you mentioned diet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's another thing um, so, kind of lifestyle-wise yeah. that can impact things? Yeah, so right along with that, regular exercise. Right, we're not talking yep. anything crazy, not marathon training, but definitely, you know, some some gentle exercise um, that they can be doing throughout their, you know, before pregnancy, of course, obviously a lot more, but then all throughout pregnancy as well, maintaining walking and some other gentle exercises. Yeah. So this is a, this story I have here, um, I and, and it's about research, by the way, mm -hmm. um, really speaks to this and speaks to both points, speaks to diet and exercise. So they did research on women who were overweight when they conceived children. And those children, as a result, when they were born, they were more predisposed mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. because of the weight and health of their mother, they were more predisposed to be overweight and have diabetes, be more mm-hmm. likely to, to have diabetes um, when, since they were born because all of that was passed on. Mm-hmm. They took the same mothers. They, they worked on their diet, worked on exercise. They changed their weight. They, those mothers were no longer considered obese and they no longer had any markers themselves mm-hmm. before they conceived the second child. They no longer had any markers that they were predisposed to diabetes. Okay? Wow. Awesome. Their children mm-hmm. didn't have any of those markers. They were born very different than their siblings wow. as a result. Mm-hmm. This is the power of diet and exercise and what it means epigenetically mm-hmm. with our children. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's so, it's so remarkable and it's so powerful for all of us to know this. Absolutely. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. What's the next lifestyle thing? So another is of course, you know, mental health, you know, man- managing stress, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's going to be being out in nature, you know, some meditation, gentle prenatal yoga, you know, whatever, you know, talking to a friend, hobbies, whatever it is that, you know, can help people be in that happy place and, and manage their stress levels. Yeah. Stress is a no, no and terrible for any health condition. And so mm-hmm. we don't often think of pregnancy as a health condition, but right. it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do need to manage our stress with that. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else? And then of course, I think everyone's pretty aware about, you know, trying to you know, limit their exposure to toxins, such yes. as pesticides, you know, cleaning, use some really gentle cleaning agents and, you know, plastics, which, you know, trying to minimize some of those things. Yeah. So we know that uh, on a daily basis, all humans in the United States are exposed to over 80,000 chemicals and toxins on oh, a wow. daily basis, right? Wow. Um, many of those are what we call endocrine disruptors mm-hmm. and will throw off our hormone, hormone balance. Um, and if you are pregnant, you're going to pass those things on, yeah. right? Or mm-hmm. some aspect of it. So mm-hmm. we need to be careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just trying to minimize, not making ourselves crazy, but minimizing the big ones. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, and anything else? Yeah. And then, of course, you know, a, a good prenatal vitamin is always a great choice to make sure you're getting folic acid and all the other nutrients all that you need throughout your pregnancy. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So... Uh, hopefully all of you watching understand why we thought this topic was so important and so valuable for Mm -hmm. all of you and so interesting. I find it fascinating. So I I love to read more about this. Um, Any final thoughts that you want to leave everybody with as we're wrapping up? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, kind of just everything that we talked about that the, the intended mother actually does have a huge influence even when she's using an egg egg donor, you know, that by maintaining a healthy lifestyle, managing our stress, optimizing the prenatal environment, you know, these intended mothers who are using donor eggs can give their babies the best possible start in life, ensuring, you know, their future being filled with health. Love, love, love that. And hopefully all of you love that as well and found this video helpful and useful. Hopefully this allowed you to understand that as parents who are going to use an egg donor, you still have a huge influence over the child, their development, um, and who they are as individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully you take that seriously, as I know you will. Um, uh, Dion, thank you so much for joining. This is a super great topic, so I appreciate you being here. For all of you watching, thank you so much for watching and staying with us all the way to the end. I'd love to hear your feedback. Mm -hmm. What did you think about this topic? Did you find it as interesting as we do um, and as valuable? And if you've got questions about this topic, please go ahead and drop those comments or Mm -hmm. those questions down below for us and we'll get those, get you those answers as well. Um, before we wrap up, just a reminder for all of you, if you uh, haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so that you can get notified when we put out another video for all of you. Um, and if you want more information on being an egg donor or using your egg donor, then head on over to uh, youreggs.com. We'll see you in the next video.